Well, it was so difficult for a girl to go into journalism. No, never mind, never mind university. I want to get into a newspaper as fast as I can. Good job I did, actually, because university would have been a waste of time. I went to I went to secretarial training college first in Oxford, and um, the editor of the paper said, "Well, write me an article about what Oxford is like, and if we like the article, we might consider you as a junior." So when I went to a secretarial college, I wrote a feature about Oxford, and uh, got a letter back saying, "Well, on the strength of your article, I think you'll be a very good journalist." But we'll take you on as a junior just to see how you go. So the juniorship lasted six months, and uh, they did, they deliberately sent me on quite scary stories, like Bristol docks late at night, where I, I was under great risk. They said, "Where be you going then? What are you come with me?" And all that sort of thing. But I survived that and wrote some good copy. So they said, "Right, we'll take you on as a full-scale reporter." So they did that. Then I became the features editor, in charge of all the features. I became information officer of the Spastic Society. When I said, I want to be a journalist. Well, that was, very few women were journalists then. You could be a feature writer or do an article for a magazine, but no hard news. So I was determined to be a journalist no matter what. So although I could have gone to university, I got the number of passes, I thought, no, no. I want to get into journalism as quickly as possible. The patron of the Spastic Society was the Duke of Edinburgh. He'd been, he'd been patient for five years and never done anything. So I thought, I was just launching a new newspaper called Spastic's News, and I wrote to the palace saying, as its royal highness as the patron, has been the patron for five years and never done anything, could I possibly have an interview? Oh no, I got a letter about, oh no, his royal highness is much too busy. So I wrote again to say, well, it's a pity he's too busy because after five years he's never done anything. So couldn't you do that? So I got a letter back saying, oh, the Duke would see me after all. That's right, I was due to get married that week, so I wore my wedding outfit. I was advised by another journalist, if you go there, you must wear a hat and you must wear gloves. So I wore a white hat, white gloves, a white dress, with a matching coat, and uh, that was my outfit. It hadn't got dirty, actually, but my husband was, he said, gosh, you wore that already? <laughs> Drove my little Austin Mini through the gates, oh, God, I'm in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> You're allowed to park if you've got an appointment, which I did, have. I had the letter with me saying I could go then. You go up to the door, a uniformed man answers the door and says, what is your business here? I have my letter saying, the Duke of Edinburgh, and he, come this way, please. Oh, I felt so proud. I'd go up a staircase, and uh, then I went to the Duke's private study. But he did say I could take the recording home as long as I sent it back, which was very good because most, most celebrities wouldn't let you take the recording home. Of course, it got a lot of publicity, and... Um, the editor, uh, no, the Duke in the end, did write a message for the Spastics News. Mm -hmm.